Now quickly before I go any further, if you could drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel, it would mean a lot. So that would be much appreciated. Anyways, let's get into the video. If there was one team that exceeded the external expectations placed upon them heading into the bubble, it was definitely the Denver Nuggets. They were a top team. They've been a top team for a couple of years in the regular season, but I think people just thought they'd get pushed over by the teams with more established superstar players and with a more established coaching staff and roster. So that's why people were so surprised when they beat the Clippers, when they ended up coming back from 3-1 down against the Jazz and then even forcing a series against the Lakers, albeit going to five games. There was every chance that series could have gone to six or seven if a few things go differently. But people were so surprised by this was because... I don't think they truly understood how good this Nuggets young team was and just how good their superstar players are. And that's exactly what Nikola Jokic is. And although Jamal Murray's not a superstar just yet, I would argue he pretty much played like that in the bubble. And if they get that same kind of play like that next year, well, then they're a championship contender again. But that's important that they get that same kind of play from their guys and a bit more because... Some things have happened in free agency that I haven't particularly liked out of Denver, and that's rare because I'm just used to them making the right moves, whether it's in the draft, whether it's in the draft, picking steals like Michael Porter Jr., Bol Bol, I mean Jokic, Jamal Murray was a good pick. Pretty much every pick they've made in the draft seems to have panned out. Obviously, it hasn't been that way. And I think they got another steal in RJ Hampton. A lot of people would agree he was close to a lottery-type guy, and he went all the way to 24. Zeke Naji, I don't know as much about, but I'm sure he'll fill a position of need and come in when needed. But free agency is where they kind of let their guard down and let Jeremy Grant go and Torrey Craig Two big omissions. They brought back Paul Millsap, but I don't think he was particularly inspiring in the playoffs. Despite people talking about how he was so good in inspiring that comeback against the Clippers, I mean, yes, did he go on that like 6-8-0 run by himself? Yes, he did. And was that great? Yes. Did he do anything else at all throughout the playoffs except provide okay defense and somewhat kind of floor spacing? No, not really. But again, I was kind of being more harsh on him because he was getting paid... $30 million a year last year. Now he's only getting paid 10 and at $10 million a year, look, he's a solid role player. There's nothing nothing more, nothing less. But we're not here to talk about Paul Millsap, obviously. We're here to talk about the Nuggets and what I think they need to do to take that next step. But for that to happen, there needs to be a few things. And first, there just has to be the development of Michael Porter Jr. Because as I mentioned, free agency was underwhelming. They lost Jeremy Grant to my Pistons. Sorry, Nuggets fans, if there was one team that I would have liked to see keep one of their star role players. It was the Nuggets because they're one of my favorite teams. But unfortunately, he came to my Pistons and that has left a huge hole because whichever way you try to slice and dice it, people saying, oh, he's like the fifth or sixth best player on Denver. Um, during the playoffs, he was the third best player. Like, there's no other way to put it. He was guarding multiple positions against the Lakers. He had good games on offense. He was doing everything up until the Lakers series. Actually, he did struggle from three a bit. But in general, he was really good in the playoffs. And although Michael Porter Jr. promised a lot, he wasn't the same kind of player in terms of defense, in terms of reliability. And that's what they're going to miss, their third best player, which is a pretty big omission. I know they had Will Barton out and he'll come back, so that'll be a big gain. But during the playoffs, Jeremy Grant was their third best player. So to lose him, they need players to step up. And you start with Will Barton, he's going to come back. He's your Swiss Army Knife kind of guy. He's going to replace that kind of production. He's someone that can create shots for himself and others. Very capable defender. And one of the most underrated misses of the playoffs. People never really talked about that, but he was Denver's third best player throughout the year, and they just didn't have him at all. Murray was coming off an injury. Jokic was coming off the disease, and they still made it that far. So when you think about it, it was a pretty impressive effort. They had Gary Harris coming off an injury. They had Will Barton out injured. Jokic came to the bubble late. Murray was injured in the bubble, and all of these things happened, and they still made it to the Western Conference Finals and put up a fight against the Lakers. Let's put that into perspective for a bit. They did a fantastic job, but they're going to need to do better. And yeah, like I've said, it's going to start with Michael Porter Jr. You're going to need more production from him. And obviously, he wants his shots. He's talked about how he thinks he's confident enough, how he thinks he's good enough where it shouldn't just be a two-man game with Jokic and Murray, as effective as that is, even though it's probably the most effective two-man game in all of basketball in terms of offense. There's just no stopping that. I don't care if you're Anthony Davis and LeBron James, no one managed to stop that two-man game, and it's just that good. 
but Michael Porter Jr. thinks he needs his touches, and he does. He can get more touches, and he needs to prove that he can put the ball on the floor because during the playoffs, he was pretty prone to getting it stripped or just running into traffic. He's good off the catch at the moment, and he does show flashes of doing stuff off the dribble, but his handle's just not tight enough, in my opinion. I think he does get stripped. He just looks a bit clumsy with it. He needs to improve on that, and when he does improve on that, I'm sure he's going to get more isolation opportunities and more opportunities to just score in general. So he needs to do that, and most importantly, I mean, it's the most important thing that he needs to improve, and these other guys that I'm going to talk about need to improve. That's defense. Defense, defense, defense. If he can get defensively okay, defensively good ideally, because of his traits, because of his physical traits, he should be a capable defender at the very least. He's got the athleticism, he's got the size, he's got the agility, he's got the movement, he's got everything to suggest he could be a capable defender at a three and a four, and he just needs to be more active, he needs to be more aware, he needs to learn when to rotate, do all these things, and that's going to come. He hopped into the playoffs after not playing much during the regular season, so you can excuse him for not being exactly defensively switched on, That's something that I think you need to learn over time. You need to learn the cues and the signals and all of those things. And I think he's starting to learn them. We saw signs of it. He wasn't as drastically bad in the playoffs as he was in the regular season. And that's important. But if he can get to his best offense and defense, which I think he should be expecting at the very least to be a 15 to 20 point per game scorer as soon as next year and a capable defender who can bra- who can grab rebounds and do a lot more than just shoot the ball because he knows he can do that. And there's a reason he was the top prospect in that draft class heading into the year because his potential is through the roof. And if they get the best out of him to go alongside Jokic and Murray, which are already established all-star level players, then that's a scary sight. And they're going to need it because Jeremy Grant is a huge loss. And the other one I'm talking about is Bol Bol, who's a bit more of a wild card. I don't know if he's ready to step it up to the top degree next year, but you've got Mason Plumley's left. I know they brought in Zeke Naji for a bit more size, and they're going to do those kind of things. Paul Millsap might run as a four, as a small ball five off the bench. Who really knows? Those things could happen, but you're going to need something out of Bol Bol because what he showed in the bubble was promising, and what he showed was he could block shots, he could shoot the ball, he could do everything we knew he could do. Needs to put on a bit more muscle, needs to get a bit more secure, needs to kind of learn the game a bit better. And if he can do all those things, if he can be a backup center with his kind of talent, then that could be an upgrade on Mason Plumlee, who was serviceable, but in the playoffs, he got exposed. He couldn't shoot the ball. He just wasn't that good at all, really. His athleticism was cool, but like, that's about it. He was just catching lobs, and even still, he wasn't that convincing doing that. So if they can get that kind of thing out of bowl bowl, just catch lobs and then stretch the floor as well off the bench just as an X-Factor kind of guy, that could be huge as well. Look, the Nuggets are in a situation where they should be competing for a championship. I have them as one of the best teams in the league. I think other teams got better and they got kind of worse, which is disappointing considering I was so high on them. But the thing is they lost players, but they've got a rare thing where Murray just had his best stretch of his career in the playoffs. Jokic is ready to go to another level. I think he's an MVP type player. I'm waiting for the year where Jokic becomes the best player in the league. I know it can happen and I know it should happen. I'm waiting for that to happen. I'm waiting for Jamal Murray to emerge as a top five point guard in the league. If he shows what he showed in the bubble into next year, he's going to be exactly that. I know it's a stretch, but that's the kind of player he was in the bubble. And then I'm waiting for Michael Porter Jr. to show he can defend and show he can put the ball on the floor. Bol Bol can do a few things that they could need off the bench. Sure, they lost players. Sure, they didn't make any huge signings. But internally, they've got more room for growth than pretty much any team in the NBA at the top end. In terms of internal growth among championship contenders, who can say they've got all these talented players under the age of 25, all these talented players that seem to just be entering their prime, if that's heading into next year, no one else. So that's why the Nuggets have that chance to make up for the loss of Grant and Craig and do so leading them to a championship contender. Look, I kind of talked about it, but as I said, I think Jokic can be an MVP level player and I think it's time for him to get even more aggressive. I know he was aggressive in the playoffs, but I think he's that good that he can just take over games and he should be taking over games routinely. 
There's no reason that guy shouldn't be dominating as much as Anthony Davis was in the playoffs, as much as LeBron was, and throughout stretches he was. He was up there with the top five or so players in the playoffs, but then towards the end against the Lakers, he got tired, he got fatigued, and his body just still isn't at the level of the other elite players. If he can get even stronger, if he can get even fitter, there's no reason this guy can't be the best player in the NBA. Is there anyone more skilled at his size no, there's just no one even close to as offensively skilled as him in terms of being a top two passer in the league, a three-point shooter, a mid-range shooter, someone who can score in the post, someone who can cook centers in the post, someone who can back down Anthony Davis. No one else can do these kind of things. It's, it's all cool and well being like one of the best players in the league and everyone being like, oh, it's cool. Jokic is good. No, he's good enough to be the best player in the league. Don't get it twisted. He's that good. He can take over games and he can just take over the NBA if he gets all things sorted. And alongside Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr., that young core really needs to take another step because I think there's no reason they can't be competing for, for a championship. And if all those things go to plan, they will be competing for a championship and they're going to scare a lot of teams in the playoffs like they did this year because they've just got an offense that is just so hard to defend when Murray's making impossible shots, when Porter's making impossible shots, when Jokic is making impossible shots and passes. You add Will Barton to the mix, bowl bowl potentially. Even RJ Hampton might get a roll off the bench, you never know. And all of these things just lead to a team that's so unpredictable offensively and so predictable at the same time that it's just incredibly hard to defend. That's pretty much all I've got to say. Again, if you did enjoy the video, a like would be greatly appreciated. Other than that, I'll catch you next time. Bye.